Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Okay, so this, today's project is so much fun. I absolutely loved it. And it was one of those things where I designed it on the fly and <laughs> didn't have a lot of time for mistakes. So I'm so glad that it turned out the way it did. Uh, so anyway, this is the rattle shaker that I put on top of a gift, uh, on top of a wrapped present for a baby shower. So it had the dome and I'm sorry that I don't have it right now. I am going to remake this so that I can um, do an assembly video for you, but I don't have any pictures to show or I don't have the actual thing to show you right now on the video. But this little plastic dome is just slightly over three inches. So from one end to another end, it's about three inches. So it's a really good size for presents, for um, a cupcake topper, things like that. Um, so the dome is about th a little bit over three inches and you can see there's, you know, there's, uh, let me see. There's some space to put things in there and we're gonna make it a shaker. So I had really fun, like pretty purple, I mean, I'm sorry, pink and white confetti in there. It made a ton of noise. It was super cute. This is, so I'm gonna show you the details and then we'll go and we'll recreate it. All right, so the first thing is, here's the name. The name, I, you know, because we're limited, we know we can go up to three inches, but not really because if you stack it kind of high, on the edges, you don't have three inches, right? Because it's a little dome. So while if you had it flat, you can go all, you know, the full three inches, but as soon as you start stacking things, you're gonna have to go in a little bit. So I made this 2.6 inches long, and you can see this is really delicate, right? It's one of my favorite fonts. It's Hannah Berry Koo from Creative Fabrica. So the link will obviously be in the description, and you guys must know by now, I, it's one of my go-to. Um, Avery, I believe is just, uh, the typewriter font. So, you know, one of the rules for designing, um, when you're using fonts is to have a mix of fonts, right? I believe it's three fonts max, but I always like to pair a really cursive, pretty handwriting font with a, just a regular, you know, plain, um, type, uh, I don't know, print font. I don't even know what you call those. Anyway. So I'm going to show you that, but I did that in um, using HTV, so heat transfer um, vinyl. And the reason is because this little thin areas, as well as, I mean, look at that V. This line right here is super, super tiny, right? When you're using quality HTV, which in this case I'm using polytape, which I'm sure you guys are familiar as well, um, but I mean it when you go to cut and weed something, and in this case too, they're up, you know, when you're applying it, it only takes five, less than five seconds for it to adhere to your cardstock. So you're not burning the cardstock. Um, the quality when it comes to cutting and weeding, I cut this and weeded it. I actually, I have a reel that I need to post, but um, I peeled it off just like this. It, so easy so it really does make a difference and that allowed me to have like a really pretty thin thin font but i layered it with a lot of cardstock so i did an outline for sarah avery which is this right here so this is what you iron it onto and you can see i have five layers so it's stacked up there so no matter what the confetti how much confetti i had in there the name sarah avery was always going to be standing up top so you can always read that which to me is important right like you don't want it to be all jumbled in there and you can't see it um all right so that's what's inside the dome um this is i believe we ended up using this okay this piece is what is going to we're going to glue the dome on top of so that is the backstop it actually holds all the confetti and the name Sarah Avery inside. So everything goes on this circle right here. The circle is 3.2 inches. So you can see that goes just slightly over the dome. And that way you can create, you can use your glue gun, your hot glue gun to go all the way around and get it to stick the dome to the paper so that everything stays safe on the inside of that dome. Okay, so that's the inside of the dome. Now, this is also HTV because if you look, I'm gonna, 
I miss scroll, like really get in there. Do you see how thin that was? And this weeded perfectly. I mean, it was just so delicate, so perfect for this thing. So this goes over here, right? And then let me zoom back out. Like I we have to zoom to 200% to see those cut lines. And again, I do have a reel to post on me weeding this stuff. It was just you know, when you have when you have good products and things work, it's just you got to keep talking about it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to send this to the front so you can see what it looks like. This goes on here with foam tape so everything is being layered where you can right um and this goes here this was i believe i did it in pink um so this will go on top like this so our dome is here the shaker is here it's everything is layered and this is in the middle right let me put that arranged send to the front this is in the middle, this of course. And then this little piece, the reason why this one's important is it goes over the dome, and it was pink, it goes over the dome, and it sits kind of just like right here, not at the bottom, but this piece, that little circle piece is important because it hides all your glue, it hides all your imperfections, and so it sits kind of on top, um, right above like I don't know if you can see but these are ornament bulbs so this little thing has a place to hang a string so that you can put it on your Christmas tree you can easily cut that off with a pair of scissors um, but you can leave it on in this case because if you leave it on like this this is where your straw goes the circle piece sits on top of it so it covers it so it doesn't matter if you want to cut it off or not but my point is that that little um, piece of cardstock is going to sit right above the dome kind of far back so it hides all your imperfections all right so now you understand like the pieces that you know make up this piece so this can be so many different things we didn't have to do this outline right anything circular like any kind of circle um uh image you know i really wanted to make this cutesy girly it was a baby shower so and then and then creating the offset the layers and the layers wherever I could I did use foam tape to just keep building this thing out so it wasn't so flat it, I mean of course it's not gonna be flat with the dome but it just felt like it was a beautiful piece in person and everyone that saw it had to stop for a second and look at it and you and with the sound as well it was just like a really, really cool project. All right, so let's start with the name, okay? So the name is Hannah Berry Koo from Creative Fabrica. I'm gonna go to text and I'm gonna show you how to do it because the little swirls at the end, I think really makes it, you know, delicate, feminine, super girlish, right? Um, so the font, let's go here. And it's Hannah Berry Koo so that you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to type in Sarah. Oops, and no H, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to leave it up here for a minute. I use main type, so you need to download that. So let me pull it up over here. And I'm going to show you this to me is one of the easiest ways to work with um, the extra, I think they're called PUA encoded something. <laughs> anyway, this to me is one of the easiest ways to um, bring in all the extra um, swirls and everything that comes with it. So I use the free edition. Um, I'm gonna close this. So these are all the fonts that are on your um, desktop. Um, so this is my computer. And these are all the fonts here. So what you want to do is I'm going to scroll down to Hannah Berry Koo. And here it is. So these are all the different characters that are available. I mean, look at the H. 
um, you know, all the little swirls and things, right? So the way you do this is you find the actual piece that you want to add. So here's the S, but the swirl is in the name. I want the swirl to be before the S, right? So you just keep scrolling until you find it. And let me see, I may have passed it. I did. <laughs> um, where are you? And you guys might have to tell me to like if there's a better way to search for it. This is how I do it. So here, I think we're coming up on it. Uh, here, so here's the S, right? So if I click hold down on it, this is what the S looks like. This is exactly what I want. So this is highlighted. I'm gonna hit Control C, so the copy, right? Control C on my keyboard. I'm gonna go into Design Space. What's important is when you click on text to add, to drop in that swirly S, you need to make sure that your font is already at Hannah Berry Koo. It has to match what you're bringing in, okay? Then in my text box, text box, <laughs> I'm gonna hit Control V. I'm pasting that swirl and it comes in. Now, if you remember Sarah, when I typed this in, I didn't make it bigger or smaller because this way, when I drop in the next letter, it's already at the right size. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out this S. I'm gonna ungroup it so I can take out the S. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the S and I'm gonna put in my new S, okay? Now here's the other thing, let's zoom in so that we can really see where we wanna put this S. We wanna make sure it's connected, right? Because we're gonna weld it later. And it is a bounce font, like a bouncy font, so it's not all straight. Um, this feels like it's a little bit too low, but we only have so many options, right? Because I want it to connect. And so I'm gonna put it maybe right around there. Now what we can do is, I don't think we can move it Well, when we change the A. So let's go and go back to main type and look for the A with the end here, this one, right? So that's what it's gonna look like. It's highlighted, I'm gonna control C, go back to design space and text box, right? Make sure that's Hannah Berry Koo so it matches. Then in my text box, I'm gonna hit control V and drop in that new A. So here's this beautiful A, it's gonna replace this one, so I'm gonna delete this, and I'm gonna put this in. And maybe this one, I'm gonna put it a little bit lower than the other one, just so it's kind of matching my S, okay? Now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you weld this. So otherwise, each individual letter is gonna cut around itself, and you don't want that. So you want it welded, so now it's perfect. Then we're gonna go to text, and I'm pretty sure, like I said, I use typewriter. So I'm gonna X out of that, do typewriter. And I'm gonna do this one. And I'm gonna type Avery in all caps. Mm, okay, there we go. Like it's not letting me do it. Um, all right, so Avery's coming. Here we go. And I wanna make this smaller, right? I want it to match this. Okay, what's great about this is now I can grab these two items and I can align and I want to center it horizontally so it's perfectly aligned. And then I can just weld this. And now this piece is one, okay? Now, the next thing is I need to make sure that it's only two inches, 2.6-ish. And yeah, so it's about the same, 2.6 and 0.9. So in height, it's about an inch tall. So I can fit that in my dome. So it's gonna be um, three inches wide, one inch this way, and then it's gonna sit, it's gonna be stacked. Because if you remember, we're gonna do the offset right now. So Sarah Avery is gonna be an HTV. So I need to do an offset so that I can iron it onto something, right? I typically like my offset to be at 0.1. You can use the ball 
the dial to make it bigger or smaller. So I moved this super far out. Let's see when design space. So see, it could be really big like this, which I don't like, um, but I'm gonna manually type in 0 0.10. And let's see it update. Hopefully it'll update. It is taking a while. So anyway, if it doesn't let us do it, because sometimes offset does that, um, I'll try to, okay, it's not working. So I'm gonna cancel out of that one. Let me see if it'll let me do it on this one. It's always a workaround. Okay, so I'm gonna do 0 0.10. Let's see if it will apply on this one. So that's clearly not 0 0.10. It didn't update on here. Okay, let's see if I can do it on here. Let's see if it'll get thinner for me. Um, once it does, then you want to click on apply. Um, <laughs> and it might not do it today, so I apologize. Um, like I said, once it you know shrinks down, it gives you that tiny offset which it should look like this. Let me show you what this looks like. So maybe this wasn't 0.1, because this looks kind of thick. Um, so I went to 2.8, so I know that my thing is 3.2, right? Because that's how big my circle is. So this is okay, and then you wanna make five copies of this. Worst case is, you know, if it gets too high and doesn't fit in your dome, then we just do four layers. But you don't wanna do four layers and then say you want an extra layer. Cutting it is annoying, so I would cut five layers. All right, so the name is out of the way. Let's go back to here real quick. And hopefully you guys haven't, you know, the offset for the most part, it works for me, it just didn't work then. All right, the dome is gonna be 3.2, so all you do is you take a circle, and the fastest way is you would just take this circle, go to the size and type in 3.2. And because it's a circle, the width and the height will match. And so it's 3.2 all around. All right, so that's our what we're attaching the dome to. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that. All right, this little guy is a little bit trickier because I had to do him a couple of times. The outer layer is 3.55. So let's go to our circle add a circle and do 3.55, okay. Then this, we need to recreate the center so that we can slice it out so that we can get this ring, right? So let's put in a circle and let's change this color so it's easier for us to see. And it's almost Let's put this guy arranged then to the front. So, all right, it's a little bit too big. So let me send it back to the back. I know I eyeballed it and I shouldn't have, but now we're gonna make sure we're gonna recreate it and make sure we get the right dimensions. Okay, so it's 3.11 and it's a little bit, it's not yet completely right, but let's align it center so that we can see how much is still left. It's practically 3.11. So this little circle, let's do 3.11 without the extra one. And I feel like that's pretty good. So. Inside circle is 3.11 or 3. Point, yeah, 3.11. Outer circle is 3.55. So that means our little ring is 0.44, right? So let's center this, align, center, and slice. So when you slice it, you're going to get just the piece that we want, this piece right here. Which looks pretty good, right? So that's how you get the 3.55, okay? All right, so these two we don't need. We can delete that. That's This little circle thing goes on top over the dome. 
All right, so we've got these two pieces out of the way. Let's delete that. Now, all we have left really is this. This and then the offset. So <laughs> hopefully the offset's gonna work. This is circle frame with hearts. So go to images. Circle frame with hearts. So I'm gonna type it in. And hopefully it pops up towards the front. <laughs> It's got a, oh, perfect. It's a subscribed item. So I'm gonna click on this and insert. But look, I mean, some of this stuff is so cute. Um, it, you know, it just depends on what you were looking for. I was looking for something really dainty and just to give it a little bit more than just a circle frame. So insert images. And I made it, let's see, this is 4.172. So we're just gonna recreate it, okay? So this, I'm gonna put 4.172. Right, perfect. Then all you do is we're gonna click on the offset. So you can see I did two offsets. And then this last one is actually the second offset, but I just wanted, I wanted my straws, the holder, the cake top holder or the, you know, whatever. I wanted it to have like a really firm base. So I had this, cause this is already covering the middle. So you're not gonna actually see this at all. This is more for my straws to sit on top of and have like a really good background, okay? So go to this one, click on the offset. And I'm pretty sure, you know, I did 0 0.10. Let's see if it works on this one. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna click apply. So there's my first offset, right? I'm gonna change the color. I'll match it to what I have in purple. Then I did another offset. And see, it already did it. I'm gonna click apply. And that offset I did in pink. So I'm just gonna change the color. Then this pink one, I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna go to contour and I'm gonna hide all so that I get rid of that center and now it's completely enclosed, okay? So we recreated it, that was it, super simple. And it's just so gorgeous. I hope you guys make it with me. Let me know if you have any questions, if you wanna see something else. I am really, so I'm, today is what, September 2nd, the month of September, 2021. I am really focused on giving you guys more videos on YouTube. So please subscribe. I plan on um, publishing quite a bit this month and to continue that going forward. So thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for that dip in time when I didn't have a lot of videos coming out. I appreciate your support truly. Um, so anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.